All right, here we are back uh, with the Heath kit uh, AR-15 receiver. And as you can see, uh, we've got uh, one of the boards out and I'm gonna let you know what I have uh, found out uh, with the follow up to the, um, to the low output on uh, both channels. Uh, as one board already has already been worked on and what I found was is there's some power resistors here in both channels and I've got the other board uh, right here on the bench and these power resistors are looking at the schematic they are uh, these resistors right here these are 0.67 ohm uh, 5 watt resistors there's uh, there's two in each channel there's one here and one here and on the uh, right channel uh, we've got the same two resistors in the right channel and what I found was that um, of the four resistors uh, the four combined uh, total resistors here three of them were uh, open uh, in the in the uh, right channel uh, both of the resistors both of these power resistors, resistors were open in the left channel uh, only one of them was open and I don't remember uh, which one it was one of them I believe uh, it was uh, just from the measurements I got, uh, since the, the, the voltage readings were the same, and if you remember from the last video, I remember mentioning that, um, you know, when I took these resist these uh, voltage readings here for the schematic, uh, I was getting uh, 32 volts on the emitter of the um, of the uh, the PMP driver, and that was for both channels. So uh, that's gonna make me think that on the um, on the left channel it must have been this resistor here because both of these voltages here and here were reading uh, 32 volts which is about 10 volts lower than what they should have been and I had zero volts from the uh, across this uh, collector resistor here um, we should have seen uh, about a 0.6 of a volt there ac across uh, across this 100 ohm resistor so uh, what I've done is I've gone ahead and I uh, had to, I actually had for the um, the right channel, I actually had in my um, spare parts, I had two uh, 0.68 ohm resistors and I went ahead and installed those in here and I went ahead and replaced this 11 ohm resistor here which is um, right here in the, uh, uh, in the return path for the uh, speaker. And I went ahead and replaced the the 11 ohm resistors were fine. There was uh, they were still reading 11 ohms. I went ahead and replaced them, uh, just as a as a matter of uh, precaution, since I already had the boards out anyway. But uh, like I mentioned, I had uh, I had two uh, resistors on hand. I had to order the rest of the parts, and that's what I've done. So I've gone ahead and uh, I've put the new resistors here on this board. And as you can see, here's the uh, the, the two I used uh, 0.68 ohm resistors. Those are uh, plenty close enough for this uh, application. And then one uh, 11 ohm resistor here to replace. And this board is going to be going to reinstall this board, and then we will uh, uh, turn on the radio and see what the um, what the what the output sounds like, what it looks like. Put the um, put the other channel amplifier board back in. As you can see here, it's all wired up now. And I've got the receiver here hooked up. Uh, the same setup basically we had before, except uh, I'm not powering the radio through an isolation transformer anymore. I've just got it plugged into the regular outlet. But um, other than that, I've got some speakers hooked up. Uh, speakers here on the on the desk, and I've got uh, you know one speaker hooked to each channel. And I've got the oscilloscope hooked up uh, to the outputs here, uh, one one channel for the left and one channel for the right, and we can see that up here on the screen. And what I'm going to do is I've got right now I've got the receiver uh, just set up in mono again, and I'm going to inject a tone into the aux to the right aux input jack back here, and we'll look to see what the output does here on the oscilloscope. So I've got a tone injected it's just a one kilohertz uh, uh, sine wave with a uh, I've got an amplitude of 100 millivolts peak to peak and we'll go ahead and I've got the tone injected I'm gonna go ahead and raise the volume up and you'll be able to hear so 
as it comes up. I'm not going to take it all the way up to full volume, but uh, anyway, there we go. So that's, um, you know, that's at a, about as loud as I want it to go. I'll turn that back down. It's about as loud as I want it to go sitting in here next to the speakers. But as we can see now, we have, um, we've now got the, the output that we would expect to see and, and the tone sounds, uh, sounds correct. Uh, if you remember before, when, uh, whenever we try to, uh, play a tone through the speakers, the, the output would, would go away and be distorted. And I think that's because, uh, if you look at the schematic, uh, you know, all, all of your power, uh, to drive the speakers is going to come through your output transistors. And, and that power has to go through these uh, these power resistors here that, that we found that were open. So, you know, with, with these resistors being open, um, you know, the amp was trying to drive the speaker with just the, the driver transistors, really. And it it's wasn't going to deliver any any power to the output. So, you know, that whenever you try to do that, the, the amplifier just, it's, it's overdriven at that point. Um, so now that we've got these resistors replaced, we're able to get, uh, you know, these drivers can actually do their job and drive the output transistors, which will deliver the power to the speakers. And that's what we're seeing here. And that's what, uh, we've got, uh, with both channels now, uh, able to get that, uh, power. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set the unit down and we'll, uh, see, uh, we'll put some, I, I got a, an antenna set up and uh, just an FM, uh, uh, antenna set up and we'll hook that up and we'll see what kind of signals we can bring in off of the radio. So I've got the radio hooked up now to, uh, um, just a, uh, just, you know, just one of these, uh, uh, T shape, uh, sort of FM, uh, stereo antennas. And uh, one of the things about this uh, radio, if you uh, if you read in the manual, is the, the at least the FM portion, uh, the the FM tuner section requires very little alignment, and that's because um, unlike you know most uh, super heterodyne type radios where you have um, a lot of uh, IF transformers that have to be adjusted, well, not this. The FM portion uses uh, crystal filters, so there's really uh, only one adjustment, uh, and, and then the, the, the factory, uh, pre-tunes, there's a, there's a FM tuner module and that section is pre-tuned from the factory. So really the only adjustment that the, the manual tells you to make for the FM is just to align the ratio detector. And I haven't done any of that yet, but I'm going to just turn it on and see, uh, how well it's working. Cause I suspect it'll probably, it should be able to still, uh, pick up, uh, uh, FM broadcast. So I've got the tuner powered up now and I'm going to turn on the uh, speakers here and so we can hear already a little bit of um, picking up the station there. All right. Well that all gives us a test. And then of Egypt in the same and you're off there's a we're getting good action there on the signal indicators that's good Anyway, so that uh, sounds pretty good. Uh, we're getting 
pretty good a pretty good reception there uh, i haven't checked the uh, the accuracy of the dial but uh that's that's an easy enough uh fix you know if the if the dial's off the manual basically just tells you to uh hold the pulley and uh, slide the pointer to where it should be on the dial so um i can imagine that uh we'll have to take a look at that but anyway um, so that sounds everything. Everything sounds good there. Uh, one thing I noticed is that um, I'm not getting any uh, st any uh, stereo reception. So I think uh, maybe we'll take a look at that next and see if uh, you know it could just be the, the light bulbs out. Although uh, I I did check the light bulb before I put it back in and it was good. So we'll see uh, what uh, might be causing the uh, stereo indication not to work right. All right. And uh, seems like a problem to solve. There's a section in the um, in the manual for uh, making uh, multiplexer adjustments, and it tells you uh, basically the steps to go through. And all the adjustments are made down here on the uh, multiplexer board. There's a uh, separation control here, and then there's uh, three uh, transformers here that uh, you make some adjustments on. And then it has some a uh, couple of uh, times in here when you have to make some connections with the, with a the jumper uh, there's uh, pins here there's a ground pin and a 12 volt pin here and then there's test points uh, here and here that you make some connections to but anyway uh, as you can see uh, maybe you can't see but it right here the uh, the little red uh, lamp is lit and that is our uh, stereo indicator which is now working and we'll turn the uh, speakers on here the radio is up sideways because they're making the adjustments but uh, anyway, as you can see, uh, and so we'll, and of course, you know, nowadays most all FM broadcasts are in stereo, so, but anyway, we can see that as the, uh, as the dial is tuned, the stereo signal indicator comes in here. Yeah, so there's one that's not being broadcast in stereo. It sounds like a talk radio station. But anyway, so that's good. So our stereo indicator is now working, and um, you can hear, I can hear, that the uh, receiver is broadcasting in stereo now, which is nice. Uh, the next thing we'll do is take a look at the uh, AM because there is a section here for making AM adjustments, and I don't believe that I can get any AM reception right now. Now, I don't have a, any antenna, but uh, I'm going to see if I can hook up maybe a long wire and see if we can pick up some sort of uh, AM broadcast. All right, so I've done, uh, I've done uh, get the AM section uh, the uh, AM section of the tuner working now, and here's what I found. So I went ahead and uh, ran the uh, alignment uh, with the instruments uh, section just because you know I had the equipment and whatnot to do that portion. And what I found was I, you know, I could get the signals, I could get this portion to work, but um, I was really having to uh, ram, you know, a, a signal in. A, 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 you know, I'd have to have the signal generator up to almost, um, you know, almost a milliwatt of, of output power. To, and, and, and with that, you know, with, with it a uh, couple to the, to the, to the tuner to get anything out of the, to get any, any signal out, out of the AM chain. And so I got to, and, and of course that, that's not right. And, and, you know, even doing the alignment that way, still, I wouldn't, wasn't able to pick up any, any AM radio. So I got to looking at the schematic and I decided to go ahead and take some voltage readings. And the readings, I wrote the readings down that I have written in pencil here. The readings I found, and this is what I found here. So on the mixer oscillator transistor, uh, I was supposed to get uh, 3 volts on the base and uh, 2.6 volts on the emitter. And I was getting a 0.4 volts on the base and 0.4 on the emitter. And uh, I was getting the 13 and a half volts here, which was closer to what I should get in the collector. And so it looked to me like the, uh, and, and I was getting, uh, I looked uh, the signal with the oscilloscope, uh, basically in injecting a, a modulated AM signal into the uh, input. 
and you can see that there was a, a very weak, uh, almost no signal coming out of the out of the mixer section. Um, and so that, and, and looking at the um, voltage readings, I suspected there was a section problem, a problem here in the uh, oscillator mixer section. And I thought, well, uh, you know, I checked the components, the resistor. This uh, 560 kilo ohm resistor was reading, uh, was reading high, uh, almost at the. It's a 20 percent tolerant resistor, and it was reading pretty much at the top of its spec. So I, I replaced that resistor with a um, with a 5 percent 560 kilo ohm resistor. Of course, that didn't fix the problem, and uh, I didn't expect it would. But what I found was, uh, ended up uh, this transistor here, I believe, was. Uh, uh, weak and I'll uh, I'll show you what I mean here I got on the uh, curve tracer so and uh so here's the transistor that was removed this is a, an RCA 40245 uh, transistor and I'm, I've got it up here on the on the um, curve tracer and I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on as you can see uh, there's almost uh, no no deflection here at all and I've got to uh, I've, I've got a, a um, change the current scale here uh, to get uh, some uh, any reading I'm gonna put it back down here as this is uh, uh, on the uh, back on uh, one milliamp uh, per division vertical scale and so and now I'm going to show you a transistor here and this is what I use to replace it with so this is a um, this uh, transistor here now which is what we're looking at so this was the one I removed from the radio and then we're looking at this one now this is a 2 in uh, 5179 uh, transistor that and I just happen to have these on hands why I used it but anyway and that's that's what I'm getting there so not changing the scales that's this is the good transistor that I put in and that's the one that uh, was removed and so but there you go and like I said and you know in case, uh, for in case you want that's the uh, um, that's the part number I use. It's a 2N5179. It's a it's a NPN VHF amp RF mixer oscillator transistor. You can look that up on the internet. But uh, anyway, and once I did replace the uh, transistor, this oscillator mixer transistor, I was able to get voltages uh, that were more um, more in line with what I should have seen. I think I was getting uh, about 2.6, 2.7 volts here, where this three volt shows. And down here, I was getting, um, uh, I think maybe like 1.9 or 2 volts. So I was I was getting uh, voltages that were that were closer to what they should be, uh, what's showing on this. So that uh, seemed to be the problem with the AM section. It's actually this one right here. I still got to uh, clean up. There's some some flux residue there, but uh, anyway, I, I was able to do that. And once we got that, the uh, I went back through the alignment and procedure, and this time I had no problem getting a uh, signal. I, I uh, didn't have to couple to the uh, radio. I could just lay the um, I could lay the the hot lead, the red lead here on the bar magnet on the uh, bar antenna, which is what it actually tells you to do. It doesn't actually tell you to couple it. Um, if you look at the uh, picture, that just shows you that they're, they're laying the hot lead on the rod antenna, and that's all you need to do to couple the signal. And I was able to do that with, um, uh, I, I coupled it uh, with, uh, uh, down to uh, minus 40 or minus 50 dB of, uh, of signal, and I was still getting a nice uh, audible signal out of the radio when I was doing the alignment. So I didn't have any problem whatsoever with making the alignments once I had replaced that uh, mixer oscillator transistor. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it on now. I got it uh, powered up on, uh, and we're on AM this time. And I think I've got uh, tuned in. Diamonds director, when it comes to so, hand picked diamonds, the diamonds director up in more selection, more value than anyone else every day. So now we're getting a big piece in the processing that we talked about. It's a fair benefit that may be a. So anyway, so you get the idea. So now the AM section is working, and I don't. Uh, all I all I've done for an antenna was I just clipped uh, uh, one of the leads onto the uh, the AM uh, antenna jack there from the. Uh, these are from the uh, FM uh, the FM uh, dipole antenna that I was using for the FM section. So I really have a proper AM antenna, 
but uh, you know, just with that setup, I was able to pull in a, a pretty good, uh, pretty good amount of uh, AM, and uh, not as good as the um, Transoceanic. I was using this as my uh, sort of to see. This will this will really pull them in on the week all the way down the whole dial. It'll pull them in all the way from uh, all across the country. You know, I'm I'm down here uh, near Charlotte, North Carolina, and I'm pulling in uh, news from New York and New Jersey and Detroit, and whatnot. Of course, uh, this won't. Uh, uh, not with this setup, but it, it, it did it pretty good. It still pulled in, uh, it would still pull in the New York stations, um, you know, albeit they were uh, a little bit quieter. You had to really turn the volume up, but uh, anyway, so I'm pleased with the way that this uh, turned out. The AM, the AM section is working now, and of course, uh, the FM, we got the stereo aligned, and we saw that. So I believe this radio is complete. Um, I'm going to uh, clean up the flux here from replacing that transistor and make sure I get, you know, all the screws and uh, whatnot put back in. But uh, this radio is ready to go back uh, to my dad, uh, who is, uh, I'm sure he's anxiously awaiting this radio. He's uh, working on, uh, he's going to build a uh, wooden cabinet to put it in uh, since uh, we never had it. He never had a cabinet that actually it went into. But uh, anyway, so that's, uh, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope... Uh, uh, you know, if you, uh, want to take one of these on, kind of get some ideas and see, um, what we're looking at. I recommend if you're going to work on this radio or one of these type radios, definitely get the manual because there's a lot of good information in there. But, uh, that is all for this video. Thanks for watching and, uh, stay tuned to the channel. There'll be more, uh, videos coming up in the near future. Thanks for watching.